We've been talking about the order of a reaction. We've been talking about the order with respect to each reactant. So here's an overall reaction. A turns into 3B. We're trying to find this order X with respect to chemical A. The order X is not equal to the coefficient. The order has to come from experimental evidence. If we had a mechanism and we knew the experimentally which step was slow, that's one example. What we're going to look in this video is at another example. To find the order, we want to keep every variable, such as temperature, constant, but keep, we're going to make a change to one variable, in this case the concentration of chemical A. And we measure the rate as a result of changing that concentration. So for example, let's do this experiment twice. One time we measure the concentration of A and we measure its rate, and then the second time we triple the amount of A and we find out experimentally that the rate triples. From that we want to figure out what is the order of this reaction. So if we write down what we know, we have an experiment we do this the first time, the rate of this reaction is equal to K times the concentration of A. Let's choose a nice number. Let's say that A starts out as one mole per liter and we raise that to the X power and let's say that this rate is equal to 10. The second time we do this we triple the amount of A and the rate triples. So the second time I do this the rate is still equal to the same rate law the amount of A is tripled, so instead of 1 to the X, we're going to have 3 to the X. And experimentally, we find that the rate triples, so instead of 10, the rate will be 30. We can cancel out some of these constants if we set up a ratio like this. K will cancel with K, and we're left with... 3 over 1 to the x power is equal to 3, or 3 to the x equals 3, and from that we know that 3 has to be raised to the first power for it to equal 3. So the tripling of the concentration triples the rate. That means that the order with respect to chemical A, this variable x, would be a 1. It may not be a 1. Here's another experimental result. In a different experiment, let's say we increase the amount of A by a factor of 4. This time the rate increases by a factor of 16. We're going to do the same thing. We're going to have two experiments. We're going to set up a ratio. It really doesn't matter which one you put on the top for the ratio, which one you put on the bottom, but it's a little bit easier to deal with numbers greater than 1, so if you put the bigger one on the top, we have K, the first concentration of A, let's say it's 1, that's raised to the X power, and this is equal to a rate of 10. The second time we do this, instead of 1 for the molarity, we increase that by a factor of 4, so this will be 4 to the X, and it doesn't matter which numbers you choose as long as the second one is four times bigger, you're going to get the same answer. This time the rate went up by a factor of 16. So if the rate originally was 10, the rate of the second experiment will be 160. Set up your ratios to cancel out the constant K. This time we get 4 to the X power is equal to 16. 4 raised to what power gives you back 16, and that power would be 2. So this experimental evidence is telling us that the order with respect to chemical A is second order. Here's the third one. This time we double the amount of A, but the rate doesn't change. What's the order in that case? So we're going to set up a ratio again, the rate, we're going to double the amount of A, so let's say we started at 1 mole per liter, so 
So the first time we did it with a molarity of 1, the second time we do it with a molarity of 2, but in both cases we get an, this, exactly the same rate. Set up the ratio, k cancels with k. 2 over 1 is equal to x, or 2 over 1 raised to the x power is equal to 10 over 10, which is 1. 2 raised to the x power is equal to 1 x has to be 0. So this is 0 order with respect to chemical A. If the concentration does not affect the rate, it's 0 order.